Maddox, one of my favorite missionaries. All right. When she come around, I, my heart just smiles when I get to see her. She um, sent me a text. She asked and told me at the same time, it was pretty amazing. She said, can you speak for me on my annual day? Thank you. Sister <laughs> <laughs> Maddox, who was it? <laughs> but I thank you. To my Dean's Chapel Baptist Church family, I love you. Thank you for coming with me, Amen. for me, Amen. singing for me. I know I owe y'all, <laughs> but I thank you. To the get to the uh, to I'm sorry to the East Star Baptist Church, I thank you for allowing me this opportunity to do something that I love the most, and that speak. And not only do I get to speak, I get to speak about our Savior Jesus right. Christ. Amen. 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 Um, <laughs> Sister, I have to tell you a funny story. Sister Maddox, when she asked me, she said, tell me, um, when she said yes, and I, I told her yes, she said, okay, well, pick your thing, tell me which one to talk about. <laughs> I said, wait, Sister Maddox. <laughs> I, I, ain't, I ain't good at that. <laughs> so I got, she got, I got back with her, and she told me um, the, um, the thing for today, do not grow weary in doing good. Amen. Let us stand. And if you could turn with me to Galatians 6. <laughs> and I'll be reading verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and the hearers and doers of his most precious word. Amen. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Lord Jesus, I come to you asking you to take Luana, take Juana, take Lulu, take all of them out right now and put you in, Lord Jesus. I ask that you give me the word to give to them. Lord Jesus, I ask you to guide my head, guide my mouth, guide everything, Lord Jesus, so it will be of your life and your will. I thank you for everything you continue to do for us. Thank you for the traveling grace and mercy. We want to do good and not give up. In Jesus' name I pray, I do believe, and we all love them, if we can say. Amen. 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 Vocabulary.com states that weary comes from the old English word weary, meaning tired. And I, it can also be described as a being extremely bored and sick of something and or someone. All right. We know that feeling of weary, tired of your job, tired of bills, tired of the world. You turn the TV on, something is always happening. You turn the TV on, the president of them United States is doing something. <laughs> turn the TV on, somebody done tweeted this, somebody done tweeted that. And we grow tired. Sometimes we just don't even turn the TV on because you got to hear something. Mm -hmm. Or how about the shows are getting boring because they're all being a liar. Uh -huh. You get tired. My favorite line is say you get bored of life. You get bored of doing things. Mm -hmm. Or you get bored of sick, uh, get sick of things. Some of y'all are sick of your coworkers, your boss. <laughs> you come in, you got to smile. And sometimes it's just hard. Right. And, and you grow weary because sometimes you just don't want to go. Amen. I got a friend, he shall remain nameless. He's sitting on this side, texting me every morning. <laughs> I made it. All right. All right. I know. But you get sick and you grow weary. Yeah. Some of y'all are sick of your children. I can speak for myself. That beautiful introduction, I, did, I should have read it because I knew she was going to make me cry. I, I am not the spoiled. All right. <laughs> but you get sick of your children. I know you get, you get sick of some of you guys that marry. You get sick of your spouse. Some of y'all who date, you get sick of your booze. You All just right. people just bother you. Yes. And you get tired and you grow weary and you want to do and do and do. Now, doing good is a broad range of service. You can do good in your community, and you can be good in your church. You can do good in your everyday life. Something that furthers the mission of your purpose in life. Right. Doing good and being a blessing in the world as us Christians should be in our church. Uh -huh. As a person, you grow weary in doing good for things where people, especially when they seem ungrateful, yeah. where you don't get the recognition All that right. you deserve. Yeah. I have a big problem with this. When I hold the door open for someone, door etiquette says, thank, thank you. you. Uh -huh. You're welcome. No, 
sometimes you hold the door open and they walk and they keep walking. Now, all right. Sometimes <laughs> it's extremely hard yeah. for myself to not yell back. You up? Amen. I know it's not always the right thing to do, and you should overlook the small things like that. Maybe they just didn't know, and maybe they're having a bad day, and they're angry at the world. But you have to watch what you say to others. Yeah. Today I want to break down that verse in three parts. I won't be before you all. I was the little girl in the back with the itchy dress on that was ready to go at the 3 o'clock service. So just give me a few minutes, few minutes, and we'll get this thing going. Amen. For my first thought, let us not become weary in doing good. Apostle Paul writes this letter to inform the people the lo to love yourself and others in spirit. Now that he has got their attention of the Christians in Galatia, he wanted to keep them on the right track. Mm -hmm. After the false teachings and the selfishness and the trouble, he was teaching them that you cannot be separated from Christ. Amen. Being separated, disconnected, mm -hmm. takes you away from the spirit of, the, of Christ and you're no longer walking that walk with Christ, in Christ. As Christians, we have to remember we must love one another, yes. Yes. help one another, yes. Yes. encourage one another. Yes. Yes. We cannot allow this to make us grow weary. Amen. Apostle Paul also lets us know in Galatians 6, verses 1 and 3, that we have to help our brothers and sisters that have the simple ways and help them without harm. Amen. We have to be gentle. We as Christians need to take heed to this one right here. Right. This is the one that can cause a hurt a person and they not step foot back into the church. And we definitely don't want that to, to end up, we don't, we don't want that to happen. Amen. We don't want to end up at the gates and have to explain to God why we said what we said when we said it. You, you want to be able to go up there and say, this is what happened. We have to make sure that we take care of one another. Amen. Because at that time we do. When you get to that gate and he says, now, what happened with sister so-and-so? Right. You don't want to be the person to say, Jesus, see what had happened. <laughs> <laughs> we have to make sure that we help our brothers and sisters and do it in a gentle, gentle way. We need to explain, get them on the right path. And we need to make sure we stay within Christ and not fall short of his glory. Amen. Amen. Now I know, I know, how do I do that and not grow weary? Trying to help somebody, especially when I have to make sure myself I don't sin or join in what they got going on. Amen. It seems like that someone that has sins or uses their free will with no worry in the world has it all planned out and it's easy to slip right in. Think it's not? Let me show you something. All right. Gossip. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And you're trying to stay within God and that lady walk in with that short dress mm -hmm. and sister so-and-so lean over right. her. Did you see that? All right. All right. You want to make sure we don't know what she had. We All don't right. understand what she was going through. Don't slip into the gossip. And my favorite line is, well, you know, God ain't through with me yet. No, don't blame that on God. All right. <laughs> you have to remain gentle when helping our fellow Christians. And we keep Christ, we keep Christ with you in the walking in the spirit, where there is no way anyone can bring you down. Ask Joe. Job had everything thrown at him. He stayed in the walk of the spirit and nothing harmed him. Amen. My second thought of the day, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest. Yeah. This part of the scripture is yes, the yes. easiest to understand, but it has the most meaning to me. All right. We all know that saying, you reap what you sow. Karma, mm -hmm. as some of us like to call it. All right. I work within the church with the youth, and we take them out and they do good things. And by, by far, I have one of the best youth department ever. All right. I love them to death. Amen. But one thing that we, um, when we go out, we always let the youth know, every choice has a consequence. Uh -huh. When we make a bad choice, yes. we have a bad consequence. Yes. Yes. When we make a good choice, we have good consequences. I want to tell you a quick story <clears throat> about choices and consequences. Now, some of the names and places have been changed <laughs> to protect the guilty right. party involved. <laughs> I took a trip with a couple of my friends, let's call them Rory and Bethany, to, uh, <laughs> going to pick up their children from a college visit. Rory was in the driver's seat, 
And we had been driving for a very long time. See, it was eight hours away. Well, she got a little weary, tired even, of driving and wanted to get there quickly as possible. And you know, it's some laws that you have to follow when you're driving fast, right? You got speed limits. You have to follow these. Well, the road was open. And not very many people, because we decided to leave early, were worried made a choice to go over the speed limit. <laughs> because previously she hadn't gotten caught in the earlier cities. She thought it would be okay. No one was on the road. We got this. Well, she took it up a notch. Now we were cruising. Well, she, she thought, okay, no one else is on this street. She took it up one more notch. <laughs> Consequences is going good. We're going to get there as quick as possible. One more notch. Mm -hmm. What she didn't see is that consequence was coming the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, my friend, we did get a ticket. Yeah. Now she knows her consequence All right. of going over and over All right. and over the <laughs> Now with this scripture, Paul tells the Christians that we have to invest in the good to reap the good fortune. Mm -hmm. We as Christians have to sow in the spirit and not of the flesh. For if, if we sow in the flesh, we are pleasing ourselves. Right. We do not want to do, we do what we want to do, and that is going to lead in a world of destruction. If you sow into the spirit, doing the work of the Lord, what is right and what is right and you will not grow really, and you will reap, reach that good harvest of fortune. Yeah that eternal, amazing life. <laughs> what I admire about this saying is that it goes both ways. You can sow the bad, and you're going to reap All the right. bad. All right. You can sow the good, and you will reap the good. One reason why I say it was the most meaningful, because God gives us free will. Yes, he does. But he gives us a God. Yes. A handbook. Yes. Yes. And all we have to do is follow us. Yes. He lets us know that, that it's clear as it can be. What you put in this world, you will get All out. Right. Yes. Right. Good for good, bad for bad. Yeah. Right. You put in this world what you want to okay. take out. Yes. And my third and final thought, we must not give up. Yes. I had a stress test on Friday. The stress test tells what you do, mm -hmm. what happens when you're, what happens to your heart when you're under a lot of stress. I told them I didn't need the stress test, but they just showed me my paycheck. I look at the net and grow. <laughs> <laughs> but I had one done on Friday, and I was nervous about it. I have never had one done. I, I really don't like to go see the doctor, but you know, who does? Mm -hmm. The best part is, the nurses always tell you, you don't have nothing to be nervous about. They know that's in their, their law. They got to tell you that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I get on, they hook me up to the machine, I get on the machine. I'm already halfway there because I'm nervous. Okay. She said, well, you don't have far to go. <laughs> so we start walking. I'm doing good, put my Jesus on, say my prayer, I'm, I'm walking. For the first three minutes go by, I'm doing good. <laughs> so they give me instructions. It's going to speed up. And it's going to incline. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm already going fast. <laughs> what y'all going to do? <laughs> I'm going to be, have a light job. <laughs> but you know, they, they always say, it's got to speed up. You, you're good. So it goes. And I'm, I'm in there. I'm going good one minute. I look over to the nurse. I say, <clears throat> I think I'm about ready to come down. She was like, no. You got two or three more going, going. Come on. I'm like, OK. All right. A few seconds go by, <laughs> nurse. I've done all I can do. <laughs> uh, she said, come on, Luana, give me, give me one more. I need one more heartbeat. I said, nurse, <laughs> I have done all I can do. She said, come on. I give her two more seconds. All right. If you don't stop, I will. As I was trying to catch my breath, I look over to this wonderful nurse, and she says, you did it, you did it. Oh, yeah, and they're cheering me on, and I, all right. But I'm trying to catch my breath because I tried and tried so hard to do this, and I got to the goal that I wanted to go to get to, and at the end, I know that I'm going to get to reap the benefit of, of passing this stress test. So when, when Paul was letting them know, you have to work and not get tired. 
You have to work towards the goal and never give up. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, you will get the um, eternal reward. Mm -hmm. Don't do all the good you can in all the ways you can mm -hmm. and all, to all the people you can mm -hmm. to, give up at, to give up at the end. Mm -hmm. What's the point? When I thought about this particular verse, part of the verse, it made me think of one of my favorite songs my dad used to sing. He, it was by the Reverend James Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Cleveland. Now, I'm not a singer. All right. <laughs> that wasn't a gift God gave me. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and take you some of the words. I don't feel no way to right. right. I've come too far uh -huh. from where I started from. Mm -hmm. And nobody told me Amen. the road would be easy. All right. And I don't believe he's brought me this far Amen. to leave. The Lord put you in places and positions because that's where he wants you. He will never turn his back on you. So why would you give up? You just try and try. Like the person reaching for it. You gotta push, push. You have to pray until something happens. All right, all right. Why would you give up and you're right at the end? The next step, the next move, right. that next block could be what what is what your next reward. But you have to stay and walk in the spirit of the Lord. Because I don't believe. All right. I don't Amen. believe he brought you this That's far right. to leave. Amen. You will get that reward. And we'll yes. Mm -hmm. We all have to remember that yes, it's hard doing good and not getting tired. Mm -hmm. Knowing we have to do good to reap good and not give up. And all we have is that goal that we want to. Amen. In Deuteronomy 20 and 8. Let us, <clears throat> let us know weariness can be contagious. Mm -hmm. But if we fight back, it also can work in other ways uh -huh. to help others preserve. God means for us, for us not only to endure doing good, but to help others not grow weary. All right. And God left the best example that we can follow. <clears throat> he sent His Son Jesus. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. No matter how, no matter what He endured, He never gave up. Amen. When we talk about Him, He kept doing good, yeah. healing, teaching feeding the hungry, and he never gave up. All right. When they lied on him, mm -hmm. kept doing good, and never gave up. All right. When they sentenced him to death mm -hmm. for doing good, uh -huh. he still never gave up. All when right. they made him carry his cross, mm -hmm. he never Amen. gave up. Amen. When they beat him up the hill, right. he never gave up. When they hung him high, yes. Yes. Him high and nailed him to that old rugged right. cross, yes. He never gave up. Amen. For my Lord yes. to go through so much mm -hmm. that people won't do the good for today Amen. doesn't mm -hmm. want to doesn't want to do good for today is beyond me. All right. Yeah. He did what his father had planned for him, yeah. even even though at times he grew weary. All right. He continued yeah. to do good. Oh, yes. Because on that third day, mm -hmm. yeah. he rose with all power. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 He preached yeah. yeah. what he saw. Yes. And that's why he sits on the right side of the throne. All right. Yes. Because he never gave up. All right. And because he never gave up, we must never give up. Because we all want to hear him say, yes. Well done, yes. thy good yes. and faithful yes. servant. All right. Thank you. All right.